A large group of people has rescued her from the spaceship. It's possible that this is the cause of her illness. The action then shifts to a jail, where we meet Trent, a young child. Trent's father, Mark, has arrived to pick up his son from jail. We discover that he is an ex-detective in this town. He was fed up with his son's antics and enlisted the help of a friend to lock him up. Mark's friend convinces him that this is a bad idea, and we should issue another warning to him. As a result, Trent was released from prison on that basis. Trent and Mark's friendship was strained. Later, we come across them on a train, where Trent is telling Mark something. That he has been done in a defenseless situation. Because he and his father had been charged with a crime. As a result, he savaged and thrashed the young men. After listening to Trent, Mark does not feel rag, rather, he feels pleased. Because he knows his son is capable of protecting himself. The train jerks violently and comes to a halt during their conversation. Mark, a detective, rushes up to the train conductor. He discovers that the train's radio is likewise broken after paying him a visit. Throughout, we see the train's exterior scene. A large number of blue lights were visible in the sky. It's like that when the train comes to a second jerk. This time, the passengers are all perplexed. The train conductor makes an attempt to calm everyone down. On the train's radio, a voice can now be heard. Everyone was told not to gaze at the visible blue light outside. Later, the train conductor issues a warning to all passengers not to exit the train. Passengers, on the other hand, opt to exit the train rather than listen to her. After following Mark and exiting the underground track, everyone arrives at a metro stop. From there, we can see the blue light behind a cabin. That light in the sky that we first noticed. Trent and a girl stared at it, as though entranced by the light, and they followed it. Mark, on the other hand, arrives and saves his son. We meet Mark's acquaintance in the police station, who is surprised to see the police station because no one is present. Later, his colleague comes. After accompanying her to check what's going on, he goes to figure out what's wrong. Whatever he saw after stepping outdoors was weird. Because the blue light had possessed everyone and they were going to board an alien ship. Trent wakes up on a subway station later in the movie. They were all hoping to get away from the blue glow. They come upon a police officer who happens to be a friend of Mark's. They decide to spend the night indoors when Mark warns them of the outside scenario. Mark was trying to peer out of the subway station window in the morning. There, he sees the alien mothership as well as numerous human aircraft. They were attempting to sabotage the alien vessel. However, several tiny alien ships emerge from that mother alien ship, and they destroy human jet planes, but one of the jet planes attacks the mother alien ship. As a result of the device, a tremendous explosion occurs, splitting the underground subway station in half. As a result, the surviving survivors are split into two groups. In front of the survivors, an alien ship appeared. The alien swallows a guy in a flash from the blue, but Mark had seen it all before. He pulls out his weapon and begins blasting the alien. After the alien's power had been diminished, Mark was successful in bringing that man out. After we watch the alien attacking a woman and removing her brain, the alien spacecraft is awakened, and Mark understands that the alien requires a human brain to be triggered. They were all trying to get away from the alien. After being restored, the other alien ship, which had been destroyed, has now began to fly. Those who fled the subway station were now attempting to flee the city, however, a gigantic alien approaches them and drags everyone inside. Mark finds himself in an extraterrestrial ship when he wakes up later. He sees numerous others who look like him, some of whom have passed away. They were consuming human brains, he noticed. When an alien attempts to extract his brain, he now fires his gun at him. Nothing beneficial happens as a result of this deed. After sensing a threat, the alien's commander has assembled the humans in a separate chamber. In which aliens have abducted a large number of pregnant lapasses. While Mark was inspecting the alien ship's chamber, a blue-eyed alien appeared behind him and was about to attack him. Meanwhile, another creature appeared with red eyes instead of blue. Who, after saving Mark, has ejected another alien's brain. Later, Mark pursues the good alien and finds a woman about to give birth to a child. We learn that this nice extraterrestrial was actually a human whose brain had been placed onto an alien. However, having seen his wife alive, he has gained the alien strength. They're also not like other people who have mind control. That girl has a baby daughter, but she dies soon after. Mark, on the other hand, assures the good alien that he would safely transport his daughter from the alien vessel. 
and she'll be taken care of for the rest of her life. We learn about that man's intentions along the road. He eventually makes it to the control room after destroying the alien ship. The alien's leader arrives. As a result, Mark and his daughter are transferred to a different chamber by the benevolent alien. In that chamber, Trent and his buddy were still alive. They were attempting to escape the extraterrestrial ship. He was going to save his partner when an alien appears from behind and eliminates Trent, which Mark has also witnessed. He was ragged because he had witnessed his son die. Now that the man with Trent has saved whom we see alive with Trent, he moves to save that newborn girl with the hand on which that excellent alien has attached a weapon. The good alien, on the other hand, is at odds with the alien boss. During the battle between the alien leader and the good alien, the good alien was on the verge of death. As he was dying, he was given the opportunity to transmit his remaining energy so that he might destroy the alien. Trent has enough time during the alien ship's explosion to remove the baby from the ship and save her before it is destroyed. Later, we see the ship from the outside. After being destroyed, the ship was sunk in a forest. Mark, the infant girl, the train operator, and Mark's friend evacuate the alien ship from this location. However, the leader of the destroying ship was still alive, and he was constructing a new ship from the wreckage. Mark's friend has died, and the baby girl is rapidly growing. We see her with the natives at night, while Mark was telling them about human arcs, aliens that require the human brain to activate. For this reason, they amass human beings. Later, everyone retires for the night, and when he awakens the next morning, he discovers that someone has pointed a gun at him. Trent's friend, on the other hand, was the one who got rid of him. The girl who lives close is taken aback when she sees the infant daughter. Because in a single night, she transforms into a five six-year-old girl. They are taken to a lovely temple by the locals. That was a drug cartel, and police were not allowed to enter. Mark is aware of this, but all they require is shelter. Later, the blood of the girl is examined by a mafia gang scientist. Because of her distinctive blood circle, it reveals to them that she isn't a human girl, but an alien. A girl was prepared to kill the newborn girl because she thought she was an extraterrestrial that could kill us while listening to this. Mark, on the other hand, saves her and explains that this baby girl could be able to assist us in our struggle against aliens. Later, the scientist joins in, predicting that the baby will die soon. Due to her rapid growth, her systems would fail. She requires someone's blood in order to live, and Mark provides it. We see the same girl we saw at the start of the movie later in the sequence. She wakes up to find out who was in the bed, and her name was Rose. She seemed to be trying to recall something she already knows. The action then shifts to the temple. We observe the same child, who appears to be in better physical condition than before. Later, the scientist discovers an extraterrestrial egg with blue lights emanating from it. Human DNA was there in the blue light, according to the expert, and it was there to possess humanity. He argues that aliens had already collected human DNA from Earth. As a result, they were able to carry out their plan, and the scientists discovered a medication from a baby girl, with which we were able to free the human minds that had been enslaved by aliens. They know the aliens are coming again, so the females set up a trap in the area. A massive extraterrestrial approaches from behind, in which many bombs have been put. We knew he was a terrible alien after witnessing the blue light within him. He was trailing a girl, who attempted to flee but landed on the bomb's detonation site. If her feet peel away from the earth, the bomb will detonate, but she can't let go because there's a temple ahead. She gives her life because everyone was at the temple. The girl and the alien both die as a result of the blast when she pulls her feet back. We learn afterwards that the extraterrestrial boss intended to send this alien here. As a result of the blast, the alien is aware of the baby girl. As a result, he concentrates on the temple. They were all ready to combat aliens in this scenario. Some people have used serums developed by scientists to help them distinguish between humans and aliens. The aliens blast up a portion of the temple as they enter. As a result, some aliens die. However, the worst is yet to come, an alien approaches them, and a man battles and kills the alien. Mark is seen hiding on an extraterrestrial ship. Other folks, on the other hand, were preparing to confront aliens. When an alien attacks Mark on the mother ship, he finds that the creature he is battling has Trent's brain. That is why Mark injects the serum into the scientist-created extraterrestrial. The alien's control over Mark's brain was ended with its assistance. We see a massive contraption controlled by aliens outside the main ship. Struggling with the alien a man dies, fighting with this machine, 
he has began to damage the temple. Following his death, everyone banded together and learned how to fight the aliens, whom they were able to dispatch very fast. After eliminating little aliens, they arrive at a large extraterrestrial. We know he's an extraterrestrial commander, but another alien is attacked. There is an alien's mind because there was Trent's mind. The alien's influence on Trent's mind was broken thanks to Mark. That is why he is here to confront the alien leader. He was having so much trouble eliminating the leader that his entire launching system was damaged. It is repaired by the infant girl. Trent finally kills the alien leader by shooting him. The control of aliens by humans was terminated after the death of the extraterrestrial commander. The human brain had come to an end, and the blue light had been replaced by red light. It was a sign that the human brain had been recovered. The war between aliens and humans has come to an end, and humanity have triumphed. Obviously, it was all for the sake of the little kid. They were able to acquire the serum from her blood that prevented aliens from gaining control of the human mind. 